This is just incredible news. The Minister of Public Works and Infrastructure, Dean McPherson, has actually released critical information about 300 million that has been lost due to cybercrime in his department. That's a lot of money, 300 million. So a statement was issued today. And this is what it says. It's important sometimes to go over everything to get a feel for what the statement is about and what the thinking of the minister and the ministry is at this particular moment. So here's what the statement says. The Minister of Public Works and Infrastructure, Dean McPherson, has decided to take the public into his confidence in the interest of transparency to reveal a staggering cybercrime-related matter that has been unearthed by the department, resulting in an amount of at least 300 million rands being stolen in the last 10 years. However, this could be more as investigations continue. Wow, that's a lot of money, 300 million. And it's good that he's taking us into confidence, that he's letting us know, and it's good that he's taking these decisions to put at least clean financial processes at the heart of his department. That's very good. I'm happy that he's doing that. In the latest episode that took place in May 2024, the cyber attackers stole a further 24 million rands. These people, I think they were stealing because they could see which the election was going in one particular direction. And then they were like, let us loot one more time because we never know. So I think that's what happened. May 2024, that really does coincide quite closely with the election. So it does seem as if those thieves did it for that reason. This This prompted a full forensic investigation by the Hawks, South African Police Services, State Security Agency, and experts in the ICT and cybersecurity industry. This revelation emerged as Minister Dean McPherson and Deputy Minister Sikhe Zikalala conducted detailed assessments on the work of the department and through the incoming briefs from departmental branches. It has become clear that the department has been a soft target and playground for cyber criminals over a 10-year period. And this should have been picked up a lot earlier. Should have been picked up a lot earlier. So I think this is all Dean McPherson. I don't think that Sitli Zigalala had as much of a contribution to it as they're giving him credit to, because he was already there. You know, if this should have been picked up a lot earlier, why didn't Sitli Zigalala pick it up when he started this job? Anyway, let's continue. I felt it important to let South Africa know what has happened and what we are doing about it. Now, this is critical. I cannot discount the possibility of collusion between officials and criminals in this prolonged period of theft. It is clear that we need better financial controls, which I have said to the department as a matter of urgency, said the minister. I think he's right. I think he's right that in the main, a lot of the corruption that occurs is not happening because the criminals are just taking a chance and then they get lucky. I think it's happening because these criminals are working with people in the departments who have been in those departments for a long time. This is part of the reason why there's always resistance to new leadership and why there was even resistance to DA coming in with a DA minister, a DA deputy minister and a DA director general. Because some of the people who are sitting in those senior technocratic positions are working with other corrupt politicians to make sure that they can chow the money. So I think it's justified to say that this issue has a relationship with government officials and not just, it's not just criminals hacking. He goes, the, the, the statement goes on to say, the minister has pledged to crack down on this syndicate and those in cahoots with them internally or externally. That's good. That's good. That's positive. We want to put a stop to this immediately because we cannot allow our department to be subjected to unchecked looting or even checked looting. No looting. This money that could have been spent on our infrastructure drive to improve, this is money that could have been spent 
on our infrastructure drive to improve the lives of South Africans. The investigation will be expanded and deepened to find the masterminds and the beneficiaries of this grand theft. And I want to see them in prison, said Minister McPherson. I think everybody agrees with him that the people who have been stealing from these government departments, blessing all of these slay queens in, in and around Johannesburg. We've seen so many slay queens, so many slay queens. You know, they learn so much scripture, these slay queens, when they are getting money from government departments, when they are getting money. In fact, if I were doing an investigation, I would go onto Instagram, identify all of the slay queens, and then just do a lifestyle audit and a relationship audit to see, Jola Kimang, who are you joling with? So that we can get an idea. And joling is just dating for those who are watching from outside South Africa. We need to know, who are these people? You know, every time there is a corruption scandal, there's a blesser and a blessed close by. Always, always. These politicians who steal, they're driven by greed. And greed manifests itself in different ways. They are basically like pigs. They just want to eat and eat and eat. So it manifests itself also in lack of discipline in their romantic affairs. They are insatiable. And they are adulterous in nature. So if you check the Slay Queen registers, you will be very able to find uh, a lot of information about who are the people who are very, very close to looting, polluting, and blessing. These things are interconnected. Anyway, it's good that he wants that investigation to deepen, and it's good, and I hope that it does deepen. I think these are positive moves from the minister. Four officials have been suspended and 30 laptops have been seized by investigators. The four Department of Public Works officials suspended include three senior management officials and one middle management official. The department was forced to shut down all of its payment system, which caused significant delays in the payment of its creditors. Now, that's an unfortunate thing because people who delivered good services, rendered services honestly, who are not part of this gravy train, are now being punished and affected. So hopefully they can reopen that. And clearly, these three senior management officials need to direct everyone to the rest of the blessers. Everyone must be... Deb in July, <laughs> that's a place where you need to also do a register. Who was there? In what capacity? In what car? And are they a government official? Are they a technocrat? That's where a lot of this stuff... And you know, Slay Queens, they talk. They post on... They will... They, car dealerships. Talk to some car dealership owners. They will tell you who's coming in there to buy cars cash and bless people. These, these bless, these bless people. They, anyway, in May, the department announced that it has ordered a full forensic probe into what it called. In May, the department announced that it has ordered a full pro forensic probe into what are the vulnerabilities in the department's information and technology system. The department identified cybersecurity vulnerabilities with the assistance of its banking partners, including APSA and the South African Reserve Bank. The investigation, which involves cyber and ICT security experts, covers the following. Causes and breach of causes of the breach and vulnerabilities. Vulnerability and susceptibility to cybercrime of the ICT infrastructure within the department. Lack of staff capacity and weak ICT systems. The minister then said, I welcome the precautionary suspension of four individuals, including senior managers, and the seizure of over 30 laptops for further examination by the investigative teams. I'm hoping that there's no corrupt people in these investigative teams who are now wiping information from those laptops. I'm hoping that those laptops are backed up and given as well to independent investigators who can also just do a cursory scan to make sure that they can identify stuff. Enroll, recruit some international guys who work on cybersecurity from the US, from London, from China, whatever the case may be. Bring them in so that you're not just relying on one team. Get a second opinion. In any event, 30 laptops have been 
uh, seized for further examination. This will allow the investigations to proceed smoothly. We are appealing to the team probing the security breach to conclude their investigation with speed. We do not want prolonged investigations with no results and consequences. There is simply no place for corruption in this department. There is no place for corruption in this department, said Minister Dean McPherson. I further welcome the initial swift investigation launched by my predecessor, and now Deputy Minister Zikalala. The department has su suffered a massive financial loss and those responsible for protecting us from cyber criminals must be held to account. We need answers as to what happened under their watch. We also ask the investigators to trace and follow the money. Always. Follow the money. Follow the blessed. Follow the blessed. Go to Durban July. Just look around. Just look around. In any case, we also ask the investigators to trace and follow the money and ensure that it is brought back to the coffers of the government, added Minister McPherson. The minister has committed himself to work tirelessly to ensure the reinforcement of the cybersecurity systems within the department so that similar incidents are prevented in future. This is good. This is good. I love it. It's great. I love the transparency. I love that he's bringing the public in. I love that he's also crediting his deputy, the, the former minister of the same department, for his role in this particular work. And it seems as if they are finding each other and have uh, a synergy, which is good going forward, right? Now, this is a significant amount of money that has been stolen. And I think the fact that they are clamping down and addressing it in this manner sends a strong message in the areas where corruption has been rampant. I think when he first made that announcement that he was going to, you know, cut down on the buying of new properties for government ministers, I went and I looked at the expenses and how much that contributed. And the whole budget for the prestige expenditure, which deals with ministers, MPs, was 80 million. Uh, the amount of money being spent on new purchases was 5 million. And the, the 80 million was less than a percent of the whole budget. And obviously 5 million is a significant, um, is, is, is a small amount of the 80 million. But this now, going for these large amounts, 300 million, that I think is something where I think you can have a lot of impact. And I'm happy that he's done this. I think that a lot of work needs to be done in the ICT space by government. When you go to their websites, when you go to a variety of platforms which have ICT infrastructure, it doesn't look like it's world class and it doesn't look as if, you know, the appropriate resources have been spent just on the websites. I'm not a cyber guy in any shape or form, but I've, I've never really been impressed with some of the websites that the government departments are running on. And I wonder if real you know, skebangers who can code, et cetera, et cetera, go to those places, look, and then identify that this is going to be easy for me to take advantage of. In comparison with if you go to UK, Germany, America, Canada websites, when you're doing comparative analysis, Australia, you can see strong ICT infrastructure. It's not horrible. It's better than the African Union's ICT infrastructure. They are like pathetic, but there's a lot of room for improvement. Right. I think that also the speed of investigation is something that we're all going to have to pay attention to. When the Steinhoff scandal happened, one of the issues that was identified by all of the people investigating is that they didn't have enough forensic capacities to be able to deal with that scale of financial crime at a rapid speed. And it's going to be important for you know, different ministries to capacitate themselves to be able to deal with this, right? Um, this issue of forensic investigating skills, as well as computer science skills, as well as cybersecurity skills. And I hope that this doesn't just become another thing where as someone else gets the tender to do the cybersecurity stuff and then ends up, you know, taking the money and then becoming a blesser and then the cybersecurity doesn't improve. So I'm hopeful about that. So I think a strong message is being sent by the Minister of Public Works and Infrastructure, Dean McPherson. And that message is that there's no space for corruption in his department. And I think the Skebengas are getting that message. And that's good. I think that he has perhaps in the last two weeks been the DA minister who has been able to demonstrate quickest how he intends to approach at least one element of his administration. 
There are still lots of questions around the rest of his portfolio, but in terms of sending a signal that he is going to put in as much effort as possible. And I think that signal is clear and it's good. So well done to uh, Dean McPherson. Uh, best of luck in getting all the skebangas and hope to see you doing more things in that job creation element as well, because that's where a lot of the eyes are going to be um, going forward in terms of like, okay, how are you going to then create some of the jobs that you've said you want to create in this department? But this is great. Guys, what do you think? Do you think this is positive? Do you think that Dean McPherson is in the right direction? Let's have a conversation. Till the next one.